Okay, so it's been a little while since the last time we chatted, and I don't want to pop back in and immediately drop bad news on you. So we're going to open up this week on some good news. You remember that video that went viral last year where the TV reporter was broadcasting from the marathon and some motherfucker grabs her ass as he jogs by? And you remember how we later found out that that guy was a Christian leader because of fucking course he was? And that he lived less than 100 miles from me because of course he did? Well, that asshole pled guilty to sexual battery this week. That's right, Savannah, Georgia resident Pittman Park United Methodist Church youth minister and man whose name, church, and hometown should accompany every story about this ever, Tommy Calloway, was sentenced to one year on probation, a $1,000 fine, and 200 hours of community service for the infraction, despite his bullshit claim that he was aiming for her back and his irreconcilable claim that he was just trying to wave at the camera. Anyway, glad to see this asshole was punished for such a blatant violation of a woman's bodily autonomy. Christian leaders are still allowed to do that, of course, but only through legislation. But as bad as his crime was, I'm not going to go so far as to say that there's no ass that should be slapped in public without consent, because my next story is about Jesse Lee Peterson. And if I ever run into him at a TGI Fridays, who the hell knows what's going to happen. But yeah, that ass had a few things to say about the dangers of smart chicks. He warned his listeners to avoid them at all costs because, quote, educated women, they don't make for good wives. If she's educated, even the sex is boring because you got to, are you okay? Is this movement right? Am I working too fast here or too slow? You got to talk them through it, end quote. So yeah, I guess... Jesse Lee Peterson saw how much meme mileage Shapiro got off of bragging about his inability to pleasure his wife and thought he'd try for a little himself. But for whatever it's worth, I think the problem is overblown. By definition, there's no danger of smart women dating your listeners, buddy. And speaking of misogynistic assholes, Nebraska. Always so easy for me to segue into a story from there. Anyway, we're going to close tonight on the story of Michael Dykus, an asshole who doesn't think his wife should be allowed to stop being married to him just because he doesn't want to be married to her anymore. See, Nebraska is one of the 17 states where all divorces are no fault. That is, nobody has to provide any kind of grounds or anything. The very fact that you want to file for divorce is seen as plenty of evidence that the marriage should end, which is so spectacularly reasonable that obviously only a minority of U.S. states would do it. And Michael Dykus would like to see that minority even smaller, which is why he's sued in an effort to end no-fault divorce in Nebraska. The Thomas More Society, the professional misogyny cabal funding this asshole's defense, claims that the law is unfair because, quote, Nebraska's no-fault divorce law allows one spouse to declare the marriage dead, and the courts rubber stamp that without giving the other spouse an adequate chance to argue why it should be preserved, end quote. Yes, the entirety of this man's defense relies on the idea that the state might know better than his wife whether her marriage is worth preserving. And before you write this off as just some crazy asshole filing legal motions, I should point out that this was just heard by Nebraska's Supreme Court. So quick before some judge rules, I need the legal reason to end this segment. I'll bid you a fond farewell and hand things back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli. 